Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be people who change our lives. Well, we all have people that come into our life at seemingly the right time or just at a right moment when we're looking for a change, we want to make a change, or something that's not working in our life, whether it's our personal relationships or friendships or career or business. And they just cause us to completely change the way we look at things and then we slowly start moving in a new direction and they often are very destructive to our lives and how we had been living before but when you look back years later you can always it's really easy to see how synchronistic that event was how amazing that person how they just kind of just came in exactly at the right time when you were most open and needed to move in a new direction I've got an email where, with a guy who's been married for quite some time and he's kind of had one of those situations come up with a woman that he met and just reading it reminds me – and I wrote a little bit about this in my book. It was the impetus that caused me to realize that I'm a little bit of a fucking lie and I really need to get out of this marriage. This took place 17, 18 years ago and I remember it like it was yesterday. There was this girl that I, I knew from high school and I had – become friends with her in high school but she had a boyfriend all the way through high school same dude and she went off to college she was still with him and I lost touch with her and then after I got married it was literally a year almost to the week that I had gotten married one of my best friends was getting married and he's actually still married to this day and has a has a great family great great relationship but I was out with another buddy of mine and we were downtown Fort Lauderdale. My wife had stayed home that night and my other buddy, I was out with him. His wife was actually the one who I met my first wife through. And so he and I were hanging out having some beers and and I remember this this particular girl when I had, when I first seen her, she was a cheerleader in high school and, and it was like my sophomore year I had transferred there and I just remember I remember it was like like it was fucking yesterday. On just looking at her, the cheerleaders and just just instantaneously caught my eye and I thought she was absolutely the most beautiful thing I have had ever seen in my life. She had jet black hair, she had blue eyes, she was Italian, gorgeous tan, great body, amazing fucking smile. I remember I think it was wasn't until the next year that I ended up meeting meeting her at a after a basketball game. I was talking to a buddy of mine and she just came over because she knew my friend and we just started talking. We got to know each other, I got her number and and I became friends with her and she was a year ahead of me and she you know, she had a boyfriend so it really wasn't a whole lot I could do and even if she had been single, I had no clue back then. I would have fucked it up anyways. But it was amazing that literally this took place – wow, that was t- – this I met, I met her in 1997, a few months before she graduated. We became, became friends and l- now I think about it. It's like literally a decade later, I married – I'm out with my my other buddy and his wife was the one that had introduced my wife and I at the time. And he and I are out. We're downtown Fort Lauderdale just having some beers, catching up, shooting the shit. He had actually graduated two years prior to me and he used to date this particular girl's sister who was a cheerleader. And I was like, God, I remember it was like yesterday. I saw her and I was just like – I couldn't believe it. And the thing that struck me about the whole situation, she was married as well at the time and I just we sat there and we talked and spiritually she was in the same shit that I was like we were completing each other's sentences it was just she was a had gone to school for architecture I had gone to school for construction management I was working for Syntex Rooney at the time in Orlando building the Coronado Springs Resort at Disney World which is a 150 million dollar job I was also had already started my business at that point actually I had left Rooney at that point now that I think about it because it was 97 so I was in the buy, fix and sell business, fixing houses and I was actually – had my real estate license at this particular point. So we just had a ton of things in common and I remember I, I went back – I just – it just started me thinking. It's like got the wheels turning and I remember thinking to myself, man, I, I never felt like that about my wife and I was like I had always dreamed that it would be like that. I always dreamed that I would feel that way about the person I ended up marrying and it really made me realize that I had – I knew it all along but it's just – I was like, God, I want to feel like that. Being around her, it made me feel fucking alive. It was just 
the attraction level that I had with her was just so fucking overwhelming and amazing and the connection, the chemistry we had was just unbelievable because there were so many things that were in common and I ended up giving her my business card and then I got back to town like a couple days later I got an overnight package from her and when she had photocopied the, the Dow. T-A-O, I think is how you spell it. It was a, a, a spiritual tradition that we were talking about that night and, and I was telling her things that I was into and it was just – it was great. So I, I get I get this package from her and we start we start talking and I and definitely in the back of my mind, I was thinking, hey, maybe it's meant to be. Maybe now we're – because she was in an unhappy marriage at the time. I don't know whatever happened to her. We never ended up getting together but – because she, she stayed, you know, she stayed with her husband. Man, it really got the wheels turning, though. And I was like, you know, my wife is trying to get pregnant at the time, and I'm thinking, damn. It's like, Phew. I knew I need to do something drastic. And I never spoke to her after that. I don't know whatever happened to her, but it was just like, it was just amazing. It was like literally a decade after I had met her, she comes into my life again when I'm in a marriage that I shouldn't have been in in the first place. And it caused me to realize that it caught. She caused me. She was the catalyst for causing me to finally fucking be honest with myself about my relationship and honest with my wife. And that started me on the journey to figuring this stuff out. And it wasn't until about four years later that I learned enough and grew enough and became confident enough and experienced enough and strong enough to finally get to have that experience of dating a woman who I felt the same way about. And it's just you know I believe that every person that we meet we're supposed to meet it doesn't mean we're they're going to be in our lives the rest of our life but they're there for a reason they have a gift for you and you have a gift for them and that's just the beauty of life it's like the universe is always working to meet our needs and the more your life matches and mirrors what you feel inside the more easy and synchronistic your life is going to be and then you're going to see the magical connection and how the world and the universe works. So I've got an update from the the woman who I answered her email the other day about how men and women communicate differently because she took what she learned in that video and went back and had a really great breakthrough with her boyfriend. I'll share that in a minute. I've got a quote that I wrote on this topic that I want to share with you. I want to go through her email update and then I've got an email from another guy who's in a situation like that. It's one of those earth life-changing type of people that, that come into your life. They get the wheels turning, moves you in a completely new direction. Probably a lot of you have experienced that when you started seeking out my YouTube videos and watch them realizing, wow, there's, that's a completely different way to look at the world. And the way I've been doing things is not correct. And the quote says, the universe works in magical and mysterious ways. When we become stuck in relationships, jobs, careers, businesses, friendships, patterns of living and belief systems that no longer serve us, synchronistic events and people seem to magically show up and completely change the way we look at things. These people and events facilitate the destruction of our old lives so we can create something new and more harmonious that is aligned with and enables us to take the next step to reach our full potential. Nothing happens by accident. Everyone and everything that comes into your life is there to give you exactly what you need to nudge you in the right direction. The more you ignore your heart, feelings, and intuition, the more uncomfortable it will become to stay stuck in ways of thinking and living that are holding you back. Life is change. Growth is optional. The more comfortable and adaptable you are to change and the more open you are to taking advantage of new opportunities when they arise, the more effortless, easy, and synchronistic life will become for you. When your life matches and mirrors the dreams of your heart, you will see how efficient, divine, loving, and magical the universe is as it conforms to your wishes and desires. So I'm going to go through the, just a quick email here from the woman giving us an update on how things have changed since I answered her email in the video that I did recently called How Men and Women Communicate Differently. She says, Hi, Corey. Wow, I was not expecting that response, but I am happy to accept it with some humility and newfound perspective. In short, thank you. She puts in big bold letters. Without realizing it, I expected my boyfriend to have the same intuitiveness 
that me and my girlfriends have with each other. Remember, women are all about emotions and relating. Eliminating that expectation gets me off the mute button, so to speak, and on to communicating my needs to my boyfriend. It's already helped. Obviously, you're not surprised. Nope. But hey, I'm new to this and quite amused. Ha ha. I explained to him that sometimes I just need to talk and vent and for him to listen and that's what last Friday was all about. I apologize for not clearly stating that at the time and that I would do so in the future. He immediately understood, apologized for his overreaction and said that he would be happy to listen and be more patient about it in the future as well. That's fucking awesome. I haven't had a chance yet, but I will definitely take you up on your recommendation to listen to your video newsletter on how to get any job you want. I'm really glad that I reached out to you and even more grateful for your speedy response and great insight. Thanks again. Awesome. Good for you. Good for you and your boyfriend. Wish you guys all the best and I'm sure we'll probably be hearing some more from her in the future. So let's jump right into this guy's email who's had some interesting developments here. He says, hey, Corey, I feel like I know you from watching your videos. I'm writing this not because I expect a reply. Hey, I'm replying. But perhaps so you can add this situation to your ever-growing arsenal of shared experiences. I think I know what the response would be, and maybe there is also an element of therapy involved in sharing this since I really can't tell anyone else. I'm 54. I've been married for 16 years with twin 10-year-old daughters. When the girls were born, I began to notice a change in my wife. She became abusive and would act like someone completely different than the person I thought I knew. As time went on, I realized that her behavior correlated to drinking to the point that now I can say she is an alcoholic. She becomes mean and unreasonable when under the influence we have come close to divorce on many occasions. There is much more I could write on that subject, but I'm trying to keep it short. On my previous job, I changed jobs last year after 10 years, I worked in the office with a woman that was hired about two years ago as the office manager. When we first met, I thought she was attractive but never thought much more about it. We had casual conversations and I found out that she had been married for about 13 years, no kids. Not that it mattered because, hey, I'm married also, but with children. My thought when I heard that was, lucky guy, but that's about the extent of it. As time went on, we began to connect and found that we had much in common, including marriage problems. Remember, you've probably heard me say, people who like the same things tend to like each other. Vibrationally, the universe has brought the two of you together and you start chatting and you realize, wow, we have all this in common. She mentioned that her husband, in spite of being an Ironman athlete, couldn't put the bottle down either and was mean when he drank. Hmm, I thought, that is a coincidence. In my life, I have found that there is absolutely no fucking thing as such as a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. <clears throat> I believe that in my heart, and when I look back at my life, everything that's happened has magically happened at exactly the right time. It's like you just know. It's like when you meet a best friend or you meet an amazing new lover, you just fucking know the instant moment you look in their eyes and you start chatting with them. You know that that is exactly the person you've been waiting for. That's exactly the friendship or the business relationship that you've been hoping to have. Anyway, as time went on, an attraction was definitely building and we could leave each other we couldn't leave each other alone. Sometimes I would pull back since I knew this couldn't end well. But she would pursue me in such times. Then she would get uncomfortable with it and pull back. Both of us trying to fight the attraction. We would make lunch dates and flirt and hold hands. And at some point I realized what a huge void existed in my life. I had subconsciously learned to turn off the affection and love emotions in my life. Except for my kids of course. A lot of fucking people do that. They think, oh I'm just staying in it for the kids. I talked to a guy today who had been been with his wife for 30 fucking years very unhappily married and he finally after about a decade ago instead of leaving his wife he had a mistress on the side but he's in the process now of finally getting a divorce because he's had some epiphanies and it's like everybody has something that happens that makes him realize this shit just ain't fucking working 
as much as you may want it to be. It's like you can't force your heart to feel what it doesn't feel. And that's what I realized about my ex-wife. I loved her. She's a great fucking gal, beautiful, a lot of fun. But I just – internally, it just wasn't there. She's 42 years old, sexy as hell and with a personality that everyone loves. At some point, I knew I was in too deep. I thought about her all the time in spite of our situations. Our relationship only went so far though. I believe she felt too much guilt over it and wouldn't go that extra step. You probably did a little bit of over-pursuing at times as well because you obviously didn't know about my work at that point. But maybe it's for the better because you never know. The guy's an Ironman athlete. He could show up drunk and beat your ass or shoot you or like God knows. It's just better not to get involved with, with people that are married. You just never know how the other – spouse is going to react he says i was all in and entertained the thought of both of us divorcing and then dating he says man what a fantasy that is huh i didn't care that it was a long shot i was in love with this girl she has since left that company as well and we text occasionally but it's not going to be anything beyond that i'm self-confident around women i have many goals and one of which is starting a band again he says that's right just yet another musician well repetition's the mother of skill if you really love it and you really have a passion for it do that do as much playing and performing as you can just trying to get a little bit better every day i stay in shape and i work out nearly every day and i have a great well-paying job that i enjoy and has great upside. I love my kids and yes, I still love my wife but not in a romantic way. So in other words, you guys are roommates. I provide a nice home for my family in an upscale neighborhood so I should be happy, right? Well, if you're not in love with your wife romantically, you're simply roommates and obviously you want to be with a passionate lover who's also your best friend. Well, I still love the other woman. I think about her constantly in spite of my best efforts to rationalize the situation. That about sums it up and I doubt if there is a new one. This is a new one for you but I thought I'd share it anyway. Well, if I were you because obviously you wrote this in, I would never call or text this other girl that you're in love with. If she reaches out, assume she wants to see you and invite her out. Hang out, have fun, hook up. But the reality, the big elephant in the room is, is that you're not in love with your wife. You love her, you care about her, but obviously if she ain't going to quit her drinking and ain't going to give that up, if she loves the bottle more than she loves you, you're not happy, you're not fulfilled, you're not getting your needs met and the bottom line is you obviously feel something for this other woman that you don't feel for your wife and you may have never felt for your wife. I mean that – that was the epiphany that I had. I had. One of my old business partners, he was he got married. He got married when he was 21 to his first wife, and he was like same exact situation as me. And he was like, I got I got to get out of this. this. I can't do this. And like literally, as he was about to tell his wife that I'm fucking out of here, she goes, I'm pregnant. He's like, oh, I can't be a fucking jerk and leave her. And so he stayed married to her and had had a daughter had his daughter and then he later had a son with her and then after about 12 years he's just like i couldn't do it anymore he's like i finally left and he you know he was a musician back then and he partied like a rock star for several years and he was about 33 i think and then one night he was playing a gig and he saw this girl who she was 18 and he thought she was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen in his life and he was telling me that on their very first date, she came – I think his car was broken down or something like that. She, she had to actually come over and pick him up. So she comes to his house and he opened the, opened the door and he says like, when I opened the door, dude, he's like, I thought I was looking at an angel. It was like sent from heaven. And he's pretty much been with her ever since and that was over 30, 33, 34, 35 fucking years ago. And they're still together, very happily married and you know he's in his 70s now and they got a great relationship and they really love love one another and care about one another. But you know, he stayed in it for 12 years but some things happened and he just real – he finally got to a place where he was honest with himself. Just the same situation that I was in. If my wife had gotten pregnant, I might not even be here doing these videos. Like God knows what would have – where my life – 
how my life would have been different obviously if that would have happened but i i thank god for the fact that i finally got the courage to leave and go pursue what i wanted and decide that i was never ever in my life going to settle again or get married unless i was 100 percent certain that i actually wanted to be married and stay married to that person the rest of my life i've had a lot of fantastic multi-year relationships since then with a lot of really fucking awesome women but that's just my path that's my life that's my truth and i'm so grateful for all the choices that i made i'm so grateful for all the women i've got to date and have amazing experiences with and help raise kids and just fucking wonderful great memories wonderful experiences that i would have never had had i not had the balls to do the right thing and follow my heart follow my intuition and know it was right and like this particular guy that wrote this email i mean if you ain't feeling it for your wife dude you can't make your heart feel something it does not feel and you you can't leave your wife for this other woman the only reason that you should leave your wife is because it's what you feel in your heart of hearts which is the right thing for you to do and i mean this other woman she may may never leave her husband but the bottom line is if you ain't feeling if it was me i mean you obviously know what i would do but the bottom line is if you want to have that real deep love, that deep friendship, you got to you got to do what's right for you. You got to live your truth and you got to start creating a great life. If you decide to leave, you got to create a great life for yourself. Create a space for somebody who's single. Just cuz you met this woman doesn't mean that this is the person you're meant to be with the rest of your life. Just like the one I was talking about from high school. The one who was a cheerleader. I have, fuck, I haven't spoken to her since then and she more than likely she probably stayed with that guy and stayed in that relationship and it was not a good situation for her but it is what it is she made her choice but the way i look at that is the universe just brought the exact right person to me that would cause me to make the changes that i needed to make to move in the direction so i could reach my full potential and ultimately if that moment hadn't happened i don't know that i'd be a coach i don't know that i'd be doing what i'm doing today but it's like when I look back on my life and every relationship I've had since then and all the great women I've had a chance to to be with and enjoy and have amazing experiences and amazing memories with, it, it's just like Steve Jobs said. You can't connect the dots looking forward in your life. You can only connect the dots when you look back. And when I look at that, all those events, all those chance encounters, those chance meetings, it's like <laughs> that shit happened on fucking purpose because – the place I'm at in my life today, it's like I'm happier and more fulfilled than I've ever been in my entire life. I have more freedom, more love, just everything that I've always wanted is just so much better. My life continues to get better and better as time goes on and it's just because I live my truth. I speak from my heart and I follow what feels right and I do what's right for me. I don't give a fuck what other people think. I don't live my life according to other people's expectations because I learned a long time ago that when you try to do that, all you end up doing is making yourself miserable in the process and besides, you're always going to be disappointing somebody. There's always somebody that's going to think that you need to be living your life a different way and bottom line, it's like one of my teachers said, truth, unless it's your own personal truth, is still untruth. That's definitely something think about so if you'd like to get my help personally the quickest way is to book a paid phone skype or email coaching session with yours truly you can choose any of those options by going to my website clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just following the instructions and i will talk to you soon 